Hello, thanks for tuning in. It's Dave Herman, alias Daz, the digital artist and tattoo artist and general artist all around, but today I'm working on my digital art. And we're working on the lantern moth. Lantern fly moth is actually what it's called. Sometimes it's all one word, lantern fly moth. Sometimes it's two words, lantern fly and then moth. It's just this is the moth though. And what we're going to do is put legs in here. And I've got to get the leg in the right place. So I've just created a layer. I'm going to move this down a little bit. So I can see it right off the top of the head there. Underneath the head. But above the bark. So, let's just put a color in there for a minute. Nope, can't see it. What that tells me is I drew over the bark a while back. So we're going to go and drag it all the way up a little bit. Let's, till this show, okay, there it is. See it? Whoa, right there. It's over the background, under the head at this point. That's where I want it. And you can see it up near the right eye. I just made a brush stroke to um, give me something to find. And we're just going to paint a little more in there. See if that shows. And it does. Okay. Excellent. So there's the first semblance of a leg. They kind of have a funny... Uh, their sockets fitting into each other, you know, like little sockets. And so uh, I'm going to put this, give it a more 3D look at the moment. And then we'll move on to the next section of it. And uh, see what, where I want to be with my grays and stuff like that for the look of it. Okay, so I've got that, and I'm going to go a little more this way, and I'm going to give it a, a, kind of an edge outside of it, like a shadow there. If you can find that, okay. Now, let's go gray again, and we're going to make the rest of these parts of the leg. They're kind of funny, and they can be distorted, and they can crunch up, you know. They're insect legs, and they do really weird stuff. So. Let's get this part up here. Hopefully I'm on top of every uh, shading and stuff I did. So I'm going to come across. Nope. Still under. I, wanna, I don't want to be over the face, but I want to be over everything. Okay, that looks like we're over. Let's try that. Does that work? Nope. Still got to go all the way up. Oh, well, that's something. See, that's over everything, but it's over the eye, too. I don't want that. Um, let's see here. It's over everything. Over everything. Over everything. Over the face, still. That's... Right over everything. Okay, let's go back up. So then we do is go all the way up, erase what's over the face. I think I can do that. Let's just take a chance. Yeah, see? And then the face shows. So I don't have to worry about it because it's a separate layer. And that's one of the tricks you can do with layers. You see that? We brought it up and then we erased over the eye. You can go back and forward in your timeline and see how I just did that. And the eye itself is really uh, a little bit darker kind of a scenario than this. So I'm going to do that too while I'm here. I'm going to just we'll just shade that. We'll get back to it. Okay. Now, let's work on this arm. Make sure we can see this. Oh, it'll be in the brush. There we go. Let's get 
get some some line work going there, something here. Tuck this in. So all these little parts of the insect arm and stuff, uh, they fit together in funny ways. And not funny like a joke, but just uh, unusual ways, I should say. Uh, again, I would study insects if I was any robot guy. Building robots just put their legs and stuff into 3D printers, you know? Take tight photographs of them where you put the little dots on them and like they do in Hollywood and scan them in exactly and then print them with plastics or more durable materials depending on what you were making. And then just uh, put motors to other parts because you can't beat these parts for the way they manipulate. And that's what we should be doing. In my opinion, when you make artificial drones and robots that walk and fly, use the shapes of the insect world. It's phenomenal. It's all thought out for you. It's done. It's like a no-brainer. It's like, just do it. Okay, so we're going to have some kind of perspective stuff in here as I figure out these limbs. And they do get truncated and bent and stuff like that unusually. So we will have some of that going on. Uh, this comes down to kind of like a wider piece of something here. Yeah, it's kind of a funny shape, gets distorted. But it would be flanged like here, kind of a shape like that. And uh, I'll get back to the music, don't worry. Uh, let's see here. I've got my train of thought going, so I stick with that. Got this going. Because the legs can bend funny ways and shapes and twists and twerk. And so we're going to do that first. We're going to get uh, some leg thing going here. Down to the tarsus. And I forget what they call these other parts, but the, the little extended parts that are like fingers are tarsus. So... something going. I may not have the best references in the world for these, but uh, it'll do. It'll do for this art. Because I don't want to you know, these are all practice for me. I'm not really making a career out of each piece. But uh, they're interesting. And they take a lot of hours. This will probably be like a 20-hour one. If you've been following the other parts of the videos. Which I hope you have. This is like part four. Finding really good pictures of everything you can just study. Like if I was doing this for a professional piece somebody was hiring me for, there would have to be a fee for like research, say like 30 hours of research to find the best reference for each section, each part, each wing, the eye, whatever. You know, that would be part of the job too. Because if you do the right research, takes a lot of time and you get really good results so that's part of the game but it, when I'm doing these as practice I limit myself to the amount of time I will devote to each one and go on to something new 
because I know I can draw infinitely more and more and more and more detail. That's a no-brainer for me. I could go on forever and just really, you know, fine-tune and fine-tune and microscopic down. But um, practicing is good, and if I get tied up in something for 50 to 100 hours, yeah, I'm just not willing to do that unless I had a, you know, a prize at the end if I was earning some money. Because I do them every now and then. I'll split 50 hours into something. But, like, I get to a point where I feel, okay, I could draw this if I had to, and it's entirely in all the detail anybody ever wanted from me. And I understand what I'm looking at and all that. And then I move on to the next thing because it's not, it's just not intelligent for me to do it forever. But anybody that would love to have insect drawings or animal drawings or mineral drawings or vegetable drawings, for sure I'll be glad to do them. We would just have to work up some type of a uh, budget. <laughs> A budgie. Budgie. Yeah. So we're doing a little lightening of the bark here so you can see the uh, this uh, leg, how it fits in somewhere. And uh, you know when you do this, they're just pretty much black and gray and white highlights, and you can you gotta have your background color looking good and all that stuff for it to really pop. But I can make a few suggestions here and there, which is what I'm doing. They're very cool looking tools and, you know, um, they fit together just in the most amazing way. Insect stuff is so dynamically cool. Like you look at it and you go, wow, that thing goes 360 degrees equatorial mount with, um, it still can flex, rotate, it can do anything at any angle that you ever could imagine. And for it to do that, it must be the shape that it is. So that's one of the things I say when you're making a robot, just copy nature because when you make that part and you put a motor to it, it will do what you want it to do because it's shaped like it's shaped because the shape and the function are what it is. It isn't just a shape to look cool. It is a function that has a shape. And more and more as I study animal, vegetable, mineral worlds and get into the science of things and learn about them, that's what I believe. That a thing has a purpose, a will, some desire to do something, and that uh, manifests itself physically as a specific task-oriented form. And so, to do what it must do and wants to do in the future, it can only be the shape that it is in all of nature. You know, they are purpose-formed. No doubt about it. There's no reason for them to be I mean, some things have attractive purposes, like for sex between the animals, or between um, a bee and a plant, or an insect and a plant, or a predator and prey. But those are functions, you know, I mean, it has a function, a 
of concealment or ambidextrous natures or uh, whatever. The more you study the insect world, you understand that you could put a thousand of them in a dish and yet none of them can see the other ones. And the predators start eating all the other things and the other things don't try and escape till they're caught and they're being eaten. It's the very bizarre. You think there's some highly, they're purpose oriented, period. And they're on a mission always. But some things do have defensive mechanisms like a stink bug because that's part of its purpose, is it's got to do what it's set out to do in nature. So nature gave it a defense mechanism, and sometimes it recognizes a certain predator, and then it can respond. But most things, if you watch videos, they don't know there's something sitting next to them until the thing just reaches out and starts eating it. So, um, It tells me something about other life forms really crucial, like, uh, you know, they could be all around us and we can't see it, and vice versa. They are afraid to interact with us because they don't know what we're going to do when you see them. So their concealment uh, is a plus for them, you know. Like they know that the longer they're concealed, the less likelihood something bad will happen if they're able to distinguish us, see us, know that we're in this dimension. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. They're just not going to... I don't know, it's very weird. The way things, the more I study life, the more it mystifies the heck out of me, and the more the potential for things unknown to us being all around us or for sure <coughs> existing in another plane of existence around us, uh, it's, it's got to be. It's got to be. It just, just has to be. Because like I say, if you watch an insect, for instance, a spider or a moth or a butterfly on a plant. A praying mantis could literally be a quarter of an inch from it, concealed, looking like camouflage petals or a part of the plant. And the other an insect does not know it's there, not by pheromones, not by movement, not by anything until the thing snatches it and begins eating it by its head. <laughs> you know? So, they are purpose driven insects. And man, on the other hand, just does stuff. So, I find it uh, interesting. as I create more and more related to insects. See how I kind of made that look a little more exaggerated, robotic or something? It's kind of cool that way. Uh, it does have like some little markings and some white and some orange and stuff. We're going to kind of get to that. So that would be kind of like, actually it's part of the face, I think. So right around here, near the eye. that and a tinge of red could be even in there something like that the head is so weird every picture is different so we'll put the eye in there now the black eye bigger like that Then a little highlight and then a super hot spot.
now, now that eye looks a little better. And the other one needs to be darker too in places. So I'm going to darken that down. There we go. There's some brown in the head, which I have a lot more white in it, but it's more like a oh, certain brown type of sienna kind of a color. It has this shielding. The whole creature is so interesting. You could put some shape to it, some color in here. I'm going to just do some stuff. Should be on a different layer, but that's okay. Some subtle. Insect stuff, you know? Insect! <laughs> They're so bizarre. So bizarre. Where another leg will come out there. We'll do a save. It's almost like a silver blue. Depends on the lighting and all these things, so they're very tricky to create all the detail and all the stuff from all the different photos that you see. And so, you know, there's some liberties all artists take in the creation of stuff to make it look a little more interesting even as you work on the reality of it all, it's just, it's like, it's got to pop out, you know. <laughs> it's camouflaged in there, something weird about it. But I don't know, I think I just got bit by a mosquito in the house. Oh, isn't that weird? <laughs> something flew around bitten. Definitely have a bite. I don't see the bug, so. Crazy, crazy Northwest. I get very few bugs in the house because I kill everything I see. Or drag it outside if I'm feeling liberating. But most spiders, they just get smashed. And especially mosquitoes because I hate being woken up by a thing going around your head, you know? It is the most aggravating. <laughs> I find that guy and he's dead. That's it. I got to get rid of him when that, that happens. Because they're out trying to be a predator. And I can find my predators for the most part. Of course, when I'm drawing, I'm not looking for a predator, see? And they know that. And they come up and then they bite you. But yeah, I just got stunned by something. You know what, it might have been in my shirt or something and crawled out. I don't know. Can't find it. It's itching. Darn. Darn, what the heck is that shit? Something bit me. I don't see any mark and it's itching. I have no idea what's taking place here. All I know is a man's trying to draw. And you can't mess with a guy when he's trying to draw. What kind of insect messes with a guy trying to get his work done? A twisted insect. Bugger. Okay. Not particularly going too fast, but that's all right. There's stuff going on here. Let's throw another uh, leg out here. Let's... Uh, yeah, on the other side of the head, we get back into our purple blacks that get highlighted with some blues. So, out of the socket here, 
on the other side. There we go. If it kind of comes out this way and curves down and it's round. So it kind of comes down like that. And by the way, the more that you draw, as you know, the better you get to see things that are there. <laughs> Seeing has a lot to do with our profession. In this case, it's a hobby till someone hires me. But one day they will. One day I dream of being a digital artist. And uh, certainly can be if pressed. Somebody puts me on a clock, kind of. Make me do something. Let me uh, let me prove myself. Okay. So that and that comes out like this. Yeah, this way. And then wider. So we'll kind of show some highlights as we start to build the structure. Just kind of here. Just kind of here. I'll move around and I'll see some bark. Kind of decide I want a different color next to that. That wing and show part of a leg and make things work by your mind. Put the stuff together if I give you enough facts. Give you enough clues, I mean. tricky part, suggestion, the power of suggestion, you know. I'm moving around above the wings, side to side, making legs. So, there you got two on the right, one above the wing and one from the eye going out to the right. Pardon me, it's actually under the eye, but it is going out to the right. And then there's connections down here. Um, you know, it would be camouflaged really well because they do that. But I'm trying to show where it is by color here and there and make it interesting. So that's what we're doing. There we go. And it can be done somehow. If you heard that thing snap in the background, it's supposed to turn on the uh, a fan. 
but the circuitry broke inside that little switch. So it makes the click, doesn't turn on the fan. It's like an attic fan. And so I can turn it on manually. I just haven't gotten around to replacing that part in the house. Because <laughs> I haven't. It's too much. There's always something to do. And I just pick out what something I'm going to do in life every day besides all the things that are on just magically show up things you got to do to run your business uh, you know reply to a notice check on a bill make a do make a stop at a post office or whatever you know there's so much stuff to do so that clicking fan thing a switch on a wall that's a timer that uh, is supposed to go on just to you know exchange the air in your house which is nice it's a tiny house so I don't really worry it too much I open windows and close windows all day and that's my my system no air conditioning here it's not needed really in the Northwest you just gotta figure out how to use your windows and turn on fans a ceiling fan or something like that or if you don't have it how to keep things closed and then just crack a window and one on the one side of the room one on the other side of the room and kind of get that ventilation to suck things in and out secretly quietly you know you can do that without the noise of the fans so not a big not a big fan of the fan in the background, the noise, just like the refrigerator, you know, it's so quiet here because I live here by myself that when my fridge goes on, it's just enough to make you go mad, start raving bonkers, crazy. <laughs> and that'll do that even in the night and everything else, it's just kind of start raving bonker, crazy noise. That drone noise, you know what I mean. You know. Hope you guys are having a good day, by the way, whoever's watching this. A loyal viewer. Some person in the art world wants to get a little tip here and there. Or the way the old Dazer works. My name is Nick, in the art world is Daz, D O Z. Even though my real name is David Isaac Herman. You can find me on Art Station is David Isaac Herman, I S A A C, my first given name. And if you type in Daz the Digital Artist or Daz the Tattoo Artist just into a search engine, you will see thousands of links to me. So I've been around. I just never uh, went after the money in a big way. Always just enough to get by until a catast catastrophic thing happens like the f uh, somebody in the family needs dough or uh, car accidents or emergencies or things like that where I've got to amazingly figure it out and sometimes I do I've been known to solve a problem or two yeah so we're getting all this going here lovely 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 When I pan back, this will make way more sense. Right now, I just, uh, you know, trusting my brain to do things <laughs> that I will pay myself with a punch in the nose for doing soon. But uh, you can see I'm playing with these colors, playing with some sockets and joints, and what I want focused and out of focus, and delineated and not delineated. And easy to see and hard to see and so on um, because this will be reduced right we're, we're looking at 113 percent so it's pretty close to actual size actually now that I see what I've got on the screen what I got going on the screen 
Um, shaping stuff and then we'll get to it well, I find it and then I push it back and then I pull it forward and then I manipulate it you know it's all it's a process of discovery when you create and you're you know experimenting as you as you work something like a, a bug biting me. I don't know what it is. Must be a little ant or something. It got into my clothing when I walked in the garden today or something. In a minute I'm going to just tear off my t-shirt and go bonkers. Something is bugging me. Scratching me. Alright, so we got some of that going on there. It makes it look interesting. Let's do a save. Let me get my back scratched against my chin. Ah, that feels better. And let's look at this actually at 100. So we'll view at 100. Let's just see how much smaller it gets. Okay. And then to see if there's actually legs, you can go view the whole thing, kind of just zoom to fit like that. Yeah, there's something going on there. Spooky Kabuki Theater. <laughs> you know? Then you think, do I want lift? Do I want to twist? Do I want to do what? And the lantern itself is really, uh, it has more yellow and stuff in it. So I'm going to get into that too. I'm going to lantern it up later. But got this stuff going on here. I'm going to put another leg in. Have four in the front. You know the wings still need work. The top two wings, a little more white in them. And you've got to just suggest a part, you know, like a, a highlight like that near that head. So you think there's a, you know, you see a piece of leg underneath. Um, I'm going to draw over that. Right there. And then uh, protrude somewhere. It just surfaces by itself. You know, all of a sudden you see it. Like out here at the top of the wing. Another digit. And then that turns into another shape. And this one's going to go right off the page. And we'll put some blue in and highlight into that just to make it interesting and some color. You know, color is nice to just play with sometimes. There we go. And then I'll push it back with the black and I'll put a button hinge in there. And there's all these little parts, like I said. Right? Play a role. Maybe something like that. There we go. Now I'll get some lift. Maybe something like that here too. Get some lift. 
in your head through just a stark shadow. Raise it up off the canvas. See, now that leg pops out. You know, do the same thing. Can have it um, like this. In your head. You know. Yeah, something there, shimmering, you know. I, I forget what they call the shimmer of the skin of uh, an insect. It starts with an L. It's a special stuff that's in the skins of beetles and moss and bugs that creates the luminous nature of things. Even though it's not casting light, it's absorbing all the other colors but the one you see. And that's a whole other thing in itself. And there's just so much stuff you could study. You could study forever. So, you know, part of being an artist is learning a little bit about each thing. But, you, don't, you know, unless you're told to, you know, if someone said, I, you got to do it to this, this is the agenda. We want you to complete this in such a way. I'll do it. And I can do anything. But when I do it for myself and stuff like that, I kind of have artistic license, imagination. I, I suggest stuff. I change stuff. I can confuse with the robotic and their insect and just make a piece of art interesting. It doesn't have to be 100% photorealistic. It can be representational or confusing or make you think. And then just think it's, your mind will convince you that it works anyways by lighting or shading or there's so many tricks your mind plays on you and I use those tricks as part of my art. Uh, especially optical illusions and stuff. I could do some optical illusions to this that would just, just be mind-blowing. But I don't want that piece to be that kind of a piece. So... So you're going to put some of these shadows in there, some harsh things that make your mind, you know, work with light and shadow. If you know some stuff about that, the camouflage of things and how they do it. And I like to play with that stuff. There's a little touch of a robotic thing in there, and that blows your mind. I'm going to bring up one of my other photos on my, other, my screen there. So I can see some of the lantern part. And actually it's a it's a larger it's kind of a shape to the lantern part. So now we're gonna work on that a little bit. So that's I'm gonna come in here like that. And I was saving this to challenge myself at the end. with some of these things. Because this is a very interesting insect, actually. And you can do some stuff and get confused by stuff. Because it's... It's confusing itself when you study it. It, it is a confusing um, thing. So. Now we're doing what I'm supposed to do at the end of stuff. See, making the body work as it's meant to be. There's a lot going on on these things, a lot, I tell you, just a ton of stuff happening on the lantern moth, lantern fly moth. I'm 
sort of making that happen now. And the thing about insects, you know, each one's different. They're in the same family of insect, but they're different, you know? So you can you can modify stuff, you can as long as you keep it in the same ballpark, so to speak. Uh, so what I did there was completely wrong. I'm gonna do that. I got my mind mixed up a little bit. There we go. I want this is more like a fan. Kind of uh, the way this all comes together. <sighs> yes, you see, this is where they get the idea of the fans, you know? Wow. Interesting. Culture, things that are made from things that are made from things that look like things. Theatrical stuff. <laughs> I'm amazed. The whole life, life amazes me. Let's face it. It just amazes me. And people like me just get lost all the time. All the time. I'm going to take eraser and erase that back a little. That's why I work on that layer, see, so I can not mess up the drawing below. <laughs> Pretty cool. Let's say that. We now have a little more look of the dragon. And not the dragon, the lantern moth itself. It's still a little bit squatter. But sometimes they stretch out. See, so I have mine stretch, stretched out, kind of. And then there's like a glossiness to the lantern part. So the lantern part's really beautiful when you get into studying it. It's just the minutia is crazy. The minutia. See, like I'm work in the layers of the body, the carapace. It, it has its own, they're not symmetrical, they're, I mean they, both sides look alike, but it's not a symmetrical kind of a creature, it's jagged and some interesting shapes. Quite the puzzle, very waxy looking. Uh, of course, see, I, when I see one of these, I can't tell if it's dead and it's on a mounting pin or some of these are not very clear representations of the entity. That's why I have three or four different references for this. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm losing my mind drawing this beautiful creature. Most destructive creature, by the way. These moths destroy crops. And from what I can tell, that destruction is primarily in Pennsylvania. Just destroy huge quantities of crops. Kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this one's dead that I'm looking at for some of the colors. So I'd be like that. Oh, what's going on? Uh, what's going on? Yeah. Okay, let's just save. And, um,
going to, did I save it? Yeah, okay. I want to view it at 100. Kind of move it around, let's have a look. Pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Kind of painterly, texturally, quality wise. Could add some detail, could hide some detail. Could put faces in this. You could do so much stuff with one of these things that they would be just kind of spooky. Like it could really be spooky. All right, so let me put some points down here at the bottom on each side of this last little layer as it gets down there. And then some black again. Plenty of interest. Actually, it's more of a three point tail. And I'll put some white into there so you can tell. Some serious glossy highlights would be here and there and everywhere, but I don't know how much I want in there of that. You know, if there's an insect, sometimes there's like motion and you can suggest it's moving uh, subtly, like maybe it's why you were looking at my picture, let's say it moved. Uh, I, I kind of like that spirit to be captured, something like that. Like you see, maybe the body's not quite steadily in focus or something, like there's a, a subtle movement or something that you can kind of feel happen but it doesn't really move but I try and make it seem like it moved you know if that makes any sense to you I'm not sure it's so so like what I'm saying is it's not a hundred percent in focus everywhere if it's out of focus just right or distorted just right you might tell your mind it moved And that would be so cool. Like that's, <laughs> to create that illusion is like so cool. So yeah.
joinery. I've changed this a lot uh, from what it was. Get that waxier feel and the lantern look. Some of that gloss. Let's do a save. And it's it's pretty I I could do the detail for infinity. I really could. This is a complex creature. There's no doubt about it. It's very, very complex. File save. Interesting. Give a view, fair screen. Yeah. And then I'm going to go change my reference. There. And there. back to some of that white in some places. I'm, I'm jumping back and forth from different bodies um, because there's different characteristics in each photo that make it kind of interesting to follow. And you can see where if it was damaged too, a lot of times in a picture where an insect might be damaged. Um, like you can tell something's broken and it's, it's not, you know, a tip is broken or a curve is broken or a thing is missing or when you use references. So a lot of times, you know, the person that worked on it didn't notice it or you're noticing more than they're noticing. Or Art is so subjective a lot of times. <laughs> As in this case, 100%. <laughs> I'm just doing what I want. Do what I want, what I want. Yeah. File save. Yeah. Starts to come to life. You know, they all have a certain look, but I'm going to go up a layer now so I don't mess anything up I've created and start to put some lift to these wings by brightening them. Certain little areas. The veins. Got to get it off the tree. And that's really where you got to magnify the heck out of it, like this. And then draw in between every little thing <laughs> very tiny like this you come back after you've got your creation going
some highlights. You don't want to make it flat, like draw everywhere in between. So that happened when I just hit my button on my digital pen where it went back and forth because I have a button set up to uh, make it move. There is something flying around here biting me. I don't know what it is. It's not buzzing. It's got to be ant. There's something like that. I don't know. I'm going to do a save. I'm going to stop. I'm going to take my shirt off and find out if I can find this thing. Pause. Why do I do that? Uh, uh, so finally back. It's 12.03 on 6.22.2021. So you can see I just start and stop. There's no editing really. In other words, I don't really uh, take something out. I just stop, go about my daily tasks, come back and work. But I never really edit anything or insert things or do any of that. It's just a starting and stopping process. So I want to wrap it up. This will be the last in this series of this illustration. And it's Dave Herman, alias Daz, the digital artist and tattoo artist. Ex-advertising exec many years ago and person shifting into the new age as always. I've had my pulse on uh, current events my whole life, so to speak, and many, many disciplines that I study and many experiences have I had that um, had people had any one of them, they would find it a lot of uh, overwhelming things that can cause you anxiety, but. I've always been on the path. So let's go all the way up to the top, above legs. And let's do our finishing touches layer. In fact, so that you can stay focused, I will type finishing touches layer. Finishing touches layer. That's pretty close. All right. Now, now we're going to first put some. Uh, I want to put something of interest in here that would be kind of mystical for fun. So I'm going to put a negative space golden rectangle in, just so I can do some of my strange sci-fi stuff into this now, okay? So, all right, let's go here and let's make a rectangle and try and keep the divine proportion. So if you notice, as you expand the rectangle, it gives you the height so I want the height to be like one. There's a little trick. And then I want the width to be 1.618. So you can make a golden rectangle. This is my gift to you in the final video. How you can do that. And then you can edit this, of course. So, if you see there, pretty cool, right? Now, to edit those dimensions, if you look down in the lower right, height, you can change that to 1.0. And if you look at the width, 
you may change that to 1.618. That is really a golden rectangle now. And there's nothing easier than that to create one. Next, because this creature is going to be investigating that, and this is my surprise for everyone, the first thing we're going to do is rotate this. So you do that with the knob at the top. Anytime you bring up any of the shapes, you will always have one of these white knobs that extend somewhere on your circle, your triangle, your rectangle, whatever. Now this is at 37 degrees. You can see at the bottom lower right, you can change the degree. See where it says R? That's rotation. And S is the shear. So you could change that. The way you squash it and stuff. But now I have it parallel to the head. And these, because I'm working in my um, designer persona, you see those three buttons in the upper left, designer persona, pixel persona, and export. Just reminding you again, the first one is vector art, scalable art. The next one is pixel art, which is your brushes and stuff. And then the export is whatever friendly export you want to go to, you can. All right. So let's go back to our illustration. Now, I want this to be some kind of a cool discovery. So I'm going to make this look like an interesting um, hole in the bark. So we go to the fill, the upper left hand corner in the screen, go to gradient, and on the left side, I can make that 100% black if I want. On the right side, I could make that a brown, a rust, or anything like that. And if you wanted that gradation to be, say, dark at the bottom, light at the top, or whatever, you can rotate your rectangle and change that. Or you can go here where it says linear. You could do elliptical where it's going around in a circle, radial, and then the very strange conical one, which is always, you have to be very large to see how that fans out nicely. So in this particular case, radial looks kind of cool. I kind of like that. Now I could make this uh, at another point on the far right, so I've just tapped the line. Now. I can slide this, as you see, changing the value. I want it to be right about there, and I'm going to make this far right just a touch lighter. So when you click your color, it brings up the color wheel, shows you where you are in the color wheel. You can change those factors. And see how I did that? Now I can make this lighter, darker, very subtly lighter, like that, and it makes it look like a hole going in from the upper right down to the lower left. Now I can put a border on that, click that again, go to stroke, and say I want a black stroke, then I go over to the right. Click on stroke, and I can change the size of that stroke. See? And 
there's my box. Now, if I want to tie that into the illustration, I can either make it float and totally warp your mind because you have a hole but it's floating with a drop shadow. I could um, make this a hole with a white highlight bar and I can do all kinds of things. So I'm going to start to play with that. I'm going to open this up a little bit larger just using the hand. And we're going to go another layer above that so we don't mess with our rectangle. We want to be separate as we paint. Then I go to brushes, basic, I mean uh, gouache, third one down is my fave. Back to color. Now, just so you can see that brush texture, take that and I might go across the top see like so to start to integrate this into the bark I don't have to worry about it going over this because I could always erase I could make it look like something was spiraling down into the hole I can undo there's all kinds of things you can do when you're on a separate layer so that's why we're on a separate layer. Now if I want that bark to look like it's going... like the design is uninterrupted, I can work right over this and then erase. So I'm going to show you how I do that. And I could even have this in multi-dimensional like you're seeing it up here going in and out of stuff uh, that last little bit went just a touch too far we'll erase down near the mouth then we will see so you can have this as a dimensional thing it's fitting in to the time space and if I wanted it to be uh, some kind of a strange anomaly only the insect could see I can control that because again this is about this insect and its life. So, now watch, I'm taking the inside back with the eraser, finding the edge. This is how you build your multiverse. Use your layers and you can always go backward and forward and erasing is the key such a great tool the eraser it's like painting in a different way and if I want to take some of that blend it back up and down or you know smooth it out into its transition I can do that like so okay so now I have this appearing I'm going to put a white edge to it Go back to brush, and I'm going to do it and, um, just coarse like this. As a glow, And I can fool your eye and make you think even it curves towards you if I put the highlight in the center of the bar. I think it's raising up kind of in a curve, and that's another optical illusionary trick. 
I really like optical illusions, as you guessed by now. And there's nothing to stop you from doing anything you want as far as like, see how I'm curving this together now? It's going to be insect in investigates the golden rectangle. You don't know what's down there. You've never been a moth. You've never been a moth. Remember, if you're on a separate layer, you can erase and use that as a defining tool to sharpen an edge or completely remove a color or softly add a color. And now the fact that I can see through the background I could change that if I wanted inside my square so that you can't do that. Or I could play with that square. Let me show you. Take your arrow. Touch your square. Over where it says normal on the right, then you can do all those things like darken, multiply, color burn, linear burn, darken. Just keep moving your pen over each of these to view them. You'll be surprised. See, that's a negative contrast. Look how cool that is. Glow. Reflect. Negation. Average. Luminosity. Reflect was interesting, right? So let's hit reflect for a minute. Now you can change the opacity there too. So you could see through it or not. Like that. Like you're looking through glass, pane of glass, or subtle change. It could go into effects. You could add an inner outer glow, inner glow. Let's say I want to add an outer glow. See that? It's like a luminosity. Does it have to be white? No. Change the color. We're making a porthole for the insect. So this is only like the size of its head and back collar. Could be any color. And if you want it to relate to the insect more, you can pick things in the ultraviolet infrared spectrums. Things that you would assume you wouldn't see as a human. Or just something cool. So I try and keep it cheerful too. Green looks very interesting to me. I'm going to go with the green. And then if I wanted to mess with that all inside, you click to the right here where it says Layer Effects. Now you can dabble with your control. Change the radius. Capacity. You might want it big, but you want it subtler. The screen of the overlay. Just leave it. There you go. Kind of interesting. Then you can go back to your layers or Say you want to affect the inner shadow. You can go like this. Look 
look at this. Uh, this layer is completely, uh, we're on a different layer. <laughs> edit, undo, edit, undo. Go back to layers. We lost our layer. I'm going to be on the rectangle layer. Effects. Uh, inner shadow. And now, can change the intensity. See that? And such, I will view um, to fit. Make sure I haven't messed up anything. And there is an infrared world, almost like an interior volcanic, volcano type thing, or like what you see below the moth on a smaller scale, a tractor to the moth. So we'll save that. Super cool. Had to answer the doorbell for a second. Back. Okay. So now I'm going to go back to my golden rectangle there. And we're going to have some stuff fly into that. So, Mr. Hand, magnify. Let's put that in the center of the screen. Let's enlarge. You can see the head, you can see that. I'm going to make it interesting. Another layer. Remember, we've got all these things here layers, effects, styles, text things, stop. Got to study all that. Okay. Pick a blue. And we're going to make a mysterious light. So we go over to uh, the first button, the top, Designer Persona. And we pick circles. And now, changing the size. brush, in brush, got to be in brush, uh, okay, there we go, Let's see if this works, no, I meant to draw, so edit, undo, my brain is not uh, functioning, there we go, I want to be in brush for the effect I want, sorry about that, make sure I'm on the right brush, Colors, new layer, and now the glow of the light, like that, see, and pull it into the rectangle on its own layer. Then we'll do some erasing. Run a separate layer to be non destructive, as they say. Definitely want to subtle crossover inside the boundary of the box. So, you like this, if you just don't. So, this is these techniques you can't do traditionally on a real canvas. Painting in the analog world, our real world. In the digital world, you have the options of do-overs. <laughs> Special effects once you learn how those do-over tools work and everything else. So now, I can have it softer from the sky, more intense as it gets to the box, fade in the box, change the edges, circular sweeps, and get rid of that linear effect, kind of, for the start. 
then I can be more intense and use the airbrush. So I'm going to go to uh, brushes, basic, down at the soft brushes. Then I can go take the center out and go to my colors, put a little intense one in. I want to be in the uh, soft brush. See, now that beam's way too heavy. So up at the top, we can change the opacity to 59, flow down a little, and then draw another beam. In fact, that looks cool, those dots. So that just became the beam. I used an error where I inadvertently touched it and decided, hey, hey, that works. Now I can go across the border and this becomes super cool. Now you can erase back soft or hard. So if you want to erase soft, you can change your parameter at the top when you bring up the brush, see? So maybe there's somewhere you want to, you know, accent the change so it doesn't look like a standard brush stroke or something. <clears throat> and then you can even erase, the sh change the shape of it as it comes through space, boundaries and stuff. So I'm suggesting that you dabble around like I do as I draw. Crosses this threshold. And they don't have to show motion, but I, I, I like to show motion a lot of times. Like their meteors or comet kind of effect of a light beam. I can have it swirl. You can do anything as the artist. It's up to your imagination. Look how nice this is. We're getting a nice little hot spot. Now, if I want to show the touch of that glow on that edge, I could, just like that. And uh, you know, that, that's, that works kind of cool, how it's coming and falling into the box. A little popcorn there and darken right below the ball at the bottom. Painting a shadow over the box hole. See, like that? Gives you the effect that it's going inside a little more. File save. Let me spit this gum out. I like chewing gums. My mouth doesn't dry out, but uh, it is obnoxious to listen to me do that. So there we go. <laughs> and now, I'll put some glow out here at the bottom. Uh, and bring this up. And then have some red specular stuff on this. It's multi-dimensional, so play with it. You know, mess around. That's what I, I mess around. For lack of a better word, I'm just I'm using my intellect, of course, and my art training. But a lot of times, it's just experimentation. You can't create something new <laughs> unless you experiment. Unless you just goof around, man. 
just mess it up. Erase if you don't like it. And then let's view this all at once. It's in the fit. Now we have that going on. And that is way cool. And I'm going to um, create a cube out of that now. So how would I do that? So uh, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some kind of tesseract thing. Let me see here. I'm going to um, I'm going to touch my rectangle, and I'm going to tell it to duplicate it. So if I left click, oh, sorry, I hit the wrong button. If I right click on rectangle, I can say duplicate, and then I can grab that in theory. So we will take that. See, I have that now, and I can offset that above see how that looks like that now mathematically this stuff gets complicated and this is what I love about it I have my snap tools on so I can line up the corners and centers it will automatically do that for me see so it's snapping it so I know it's exactly right above the other one and then I can connect these corners so I'm going to put the top here just for my reference. One minute. Top rectangle. Oh, man. Missed it. Messed it up. Hang on. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now I want to um, assistant a new layer mask. No, we don't need you right now. You have assistant there. What happens if I turn that off? I don't see much change. Let me enlarge it for a second. Something happened there. I'm going to move that around. I'm going to turn this off. I think it thought I was going to draw and I didn't draw. So I'm going to clobber that mask. Let's just see what happens. Oh, okay. We don't want to do that. Edit. Undo. Okay. There's that. Uh, rectangle. Take the mask out. Okay, there we go. Save. And then I want to join stuff around and do what I got to do. Okay, so now I've got positioned where I want. I want to make new corners or a new edge. And I can do that with playing around with the rectangle. I'll show you. You go here, grab a rectangle. And line it up with uh, the corner. Oh, I want to be on a new layer, so I want to be uh, above everything. And then I'm going to touch and coat it there. Uh, I'm not sure if this will, it should work, but I, I've got to. Um, thinking edit undo what I'm going to do is just uh, I'm just going to draw it, hand draw it so let's go to brush and let's go to a bluish tinge and then I will go from corner to corner just by hand. See, like that. 
because I didn't need much, just like that. And in the front corner, and the far right corner. And it's just by hand eyeballing it. Okay, but now I've got a rectangle. Yeah, and I could even do the inside corner. That would be a good idea. Just so. Now we have this strange multiverse kind of a box appearing. And if I want that light to look like it's going through the back side of the box, and not even with the lid, I can do a very cool erase. So I would go to the lower part of the rectangle, and I believe if I erase inside the box, uh, let's see, maybe it's the layer below. Nope. Uh, I'm going to edit, uh, edit that stuff out. One second. Sometimes these things are tricky. Don't think you can just get it right on the first bit. Okay. So I have to find, I touch this, there's the layer. Okay, that shows the layer with the ball. Now, I erase and get inside. There we go. See, so I'm, I'm, I'm lowering it down so it's coming in. I'm going to change the lid by actually changing the layer behind. It looks like I'm working on the lid, the top surface. But I'm working behind it to get that effect. See, now they're coming through the side. And it's a whole other different dimension to it. And then I can break the edge along the top so that it, it doesn't tie into the top. It, instead, it looks like it's going through the sides. So that would be what I'd want to do there. Yes, save. And then put a little popcorn highlights. I love those little popcorn hot spots. So put that in there. And I will do that with the brush. And I'm sticking to the layer of the paint where I painted. So I can always paint it out or in or whatever I want to do. Like that, see? That gives it kind of a motion. I can put one even down on the lower right hand side. Have a little trail if I want. You know, these can be clusters of things. So you have tons and tons of options depending on your skill and your mind and your imagination and all that good stuff. Now I'm going to take the light source completely out of the picture at the top with the eraser because I want that box to be multiverse and it's not part of natural light entering the picture. See, so I can go ahead and erase. I'm going to go way up on the eraser. Look at that, I took it right out of the background. Right out of the painting, because this is called non-destructive work. You have to be conscious of your layers, and then you can always go back and edit your work. Super crucial. Now that looks very, very, very interesting. The front plane, uh, it looks as though the, the sphere is going over the top bar. So I don't want that either. So I'm going to erase, and I'm going to go right along the top edge, just slightly like that, so it's inside the box. See? Going to edit and do that last line was a little jaggy. Same thing on the left. Come down and clean that black line. Now everything's inside that box. And I don't want it to look like glass, really. It's just a, it's just a thing. It's just a, <laughs> it's just a, uh, a thing happening. 
That's a save. And now it's above the bark, kind of, in the bark. Let's look at it all together. Pretty interesting. We will leave that like that for a minute. Now, if I wanted that to really tie into the insect, I could have a little glow on the arm of the insect, the moth. So let's do that. This is where you play with reality. So if I wanted to find that arm, I'd go to my arrow at the top and I'd touch the arm. And that shows me the layer of the legs. I insert a layer above that where I would add the color so I don't damage the arm. Because if I don't like what I do, I don't have to repaint the arm. See? I could put a little glow in there like that, like it's casting light. Even this way. And soften that. So, if I view it all again, and then if I show it 100, you see how there's light on the uh, arms now, the legs. That looks cool. And then, if I wanted a communication like it was over its third eye, I could add a layer above everything and put a magical sphere of fuchsia luminosity say in the third eye area like that fuchsia is darker than red and then put the red in the center Then put the orange next, and then a Scotia yellow, and you get this nice effect. And then a hot spot of the white. This communication is going on. I could real, be real blatant and have uh, rays going off that and all that. But I just want the communication to be like that. And I think I'm going to call it. File, save. Let me view this all together. And that's it. That's the final piece. <laughs> I think I'm going to keep it subtle. Well, I could bring this the, the closest wing. Let's let's take that um, a little bit closer to us with some white. So we'll go to the white. Make sure we're in the white right brush, which is going to be the gouache brush. Third one down, and check the values of the color brush. Now, I don't want to be at 100, so I'm going to take that down to about 70-something, take this down to about 15-ish, turn off the hardness. And then I will add some distinct white areas to make the wing look like it's coming at us. Okay. So I will be uh, like so. Oop, too many layers. Here, brush. Da -da 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 pick white, okay. And then I'll do the lead edge. Uh, let's see, I want to be over this, so it should be painting. There we go. And 
some high hot spot at the top. Now, why the brush isn't showing? Uh, we're gonna get rid of this layer here. Let's, in fact, let's just that crazy layer there. Let me try and. Uh, to just paint right on that layer now. Let's see, does it show up? Yeah, okay. That's what we wanted it to be subtle. We didn't want to be able to just hit it and, uh, you know, some of these lines do pass through the spots. Just didn't want it to be too obvious. Like that. Then I can have a basic brush, solid brush. Define lines with white and black. So we have to go to black first. And just shape. Okay, that's a little bit too harsh. Edit, undo. I want to be in a smaller line. Where am I at? Brushes. All the way up. There we go. Color. And then uh, do that again. So there's a, the idea, edit, undo, and like that. And where I go out, out of the boundary, I can just erase. I don't have to draw the line over. Just erase. Subtle things. Okay. So then I want to erase where I've crossed over into the dots. So you can do that. Maybe touch the border. There we go. And then I went out of there. And then add a white highlight above. I always have to look. Every time you switch brushes, it does crazy stuff. Makes a new brush. <laughs> like it should, but I have to be watching. But I will pay a price. see a subtle lightning to the edge where I have the black bars, the black vein divider. You can do 
some of that. So the amount of detail you can put into these things is infinite, of course. And it depends on just how mind-bogglingly cool you want to make something. <laughs> just, you know, mind-boggling cool as far as detail. But there's no limit to your options. And it gives it lift. That's what I'm looking for in this case, a little bit of more lift. I can do, you know, it doesn't have to look exactly like my reference. I'm free to have license to my editing, uh, you know, free will, as it were, to which direction I want to go. And that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to save and view at all that fit and seem to fit. I think that wing lifts enough. I think we got to softly erase just a touch on the back end there, a little less intensity. There we go. And now put some white on the lead edge of the other wing. And then that's going to be a wrap. Uh, because I don't want to get too crazy. But I do want a little bit of a... I will put some highlight up at the top. That lifts it a little bit. Like that. They're not transparent. They're opaque, but they're interesting. And I might introduce a black shadow kind of thing in a lower right wing, right in there. So a little separation. There's so much subtle stuff going on in these images, pictures and stuff that you could just, you will go bananas trying to replicate it all. A photograph of the creature. interesting stuff that's just always happening. An infinity of things happening. There's even layers upon layers of carapace and stuff like that. You know, it's just so super cool being insects. And, uh, man, you can do this forever. So you just have to Say I'm going to cut it off when you're ready. And that's that's pretty good there. And I'm going to sign that. And that's going to be the finale. So we will uh, put a signature layer. I'm going to do white in the lower right. So I will enlarge that a little bit. Move it over. And sign it. And I'm quite happy with this piece. <sighs> so much detail and stuff. It's, I'm going to call it just to save my sanity. So I'm up there. I'll get the brush. And I'm going to go. Oops. Sometimes when you got your uh, computer monitor at the wrong angle or something like that. Oh, what did I do? What did I do? What did I do? Uh, there we go. Okay. Try again. Nope. Yeah, that's good. I like the overlap's okay. 
Nope. This is where you can change everything with layers. I want that to be a little fuzzier. So I'm going to go down to uh, like that. And I'm going to try that again. That's not bad. Not great. Doesn't matter. Six. Twenty-two. Twenty. second bar that does like that. Nope. It's like a P now. Shoot me. <laughs> Just shoot me. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna put uh, I'm gonna do a file save. I'm gonna view it. Fit on screen. Ah, uh, that's tolerable. That's a save. Make sure we save it. Mm -hmm. And then export the final frame. I'm going to go really high res with this one. And make it number 8. And then I'm going to save it again, lower res, for the video. So like, uh, uh, file, export, export, and I'll call that nine video, nine for YouTube. Okay, and that's it, folks. I am done. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Let's uh, let's go. To call her a wrap. Thank you. Ciao.